Okay, so we're starting with our um, telephone image here, and then I have uh, pre-colored or pre-painted with a red uh, using this ampersand gesso board. So the gesso board is just a small five by seven, but it's a rigid surface, so it's gonna allow the brush strokes to show up. It's always stamped on the back to show you what material it is, because there's several different surfaces depending on what you're working on. Um, so that's what we're gonna include. The image here today was um, done by Raymond Logan, and this was just a little uh, rotary telephone that we're using. And then again, to recap the colors, I'm using uh, number one is the titanium white, okay? Number two is the yellow ochre, and these are golden heavy body acrylics. Um, number three is the pyrrole red, and number four is an ultramarine blue, and we could have done without that if we needed to. And then five is a bone black. And these will be listed in print um, on the bottom of the, the video lesson as well. So you'll be able to go back and refer to them. And then I've just kind of put them out in value order and set them um, aside for you. Now you don't need, um, you know, specific, you can use uh, fluid acrylics. You can use uh, different brands if those are available to you. Uh, I just know what these colors do, which is why I picked them. And you can substitute out your colors as well. For now, I'm gonna set the palette aside so that I can uh, draw a little bit first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of um, this Duralar uh, plastic, and it's a, like an acetate, it's an archival polyester film, and this is Duralar from Graphics Plastics. And I'm gonna be using this to uh, teach with, and I'm gonna take the cover off of the top, and this is just like a equivalent to a transparency. And you can actually paint on it as a surface. I'm gonna be using it as a teaching tool for this. So starting off, I'm gonna move my little red board aside, and I'm gonna work on this and draw the shapes out so that when I'm trying to establish what's the biggest compositional shape for this uh, artwork. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for the largest shape in the image, and to me, it's the base of this phone, right? So I'm just gonna draw what I believe to be a shape, and it's gonna kind of be like a um, anvil shape, just to kind of include the phone. And what I'm doing by doing this, it's not like you have to do it, but I'm just training the brain to see proportionally. Look at how far distance there is between the shape and the bottom and look at how far the distance is from the top and the bottom so proportionately i'm kind of distancing that major piece within the composition so that when i go back to draw you're going to see me drawing on the canvas doing the same thing but overall i'm looking for the biggest shape now what we've done before in the past is we've said, oh, what's it gonna touch first? So when I go in and, and, and I'm working on a real life still life, maybe I'll use my brush handle and say, well, what part of it does it touch first? Well, look, it's touching you know, this part of the telephone receiver first, or it's touching this top part of the phone first, or depending on whether I'm including the cord or not, it's touching that first, or here's the bottom border. So pretty much the whole shape is contained but what I'm doing is I'm taking an overall piece and I'm breaking it into smaller pieces. So now I have this big modular um, piece of the phone because this piece is more dominant than this piece. So hopefully you'll agree with that as well. So if I had to keep reducing this to smaller forms, what I would do is I could draw another shape to indicate this receiver and I could do that on both sides. And what I'm noticing now is that this piece butts right up to the border of my substrate, substrate being the canvas or the panel or whatever it is you're working on. And then I can just use this connection piece to pull that together. And then I've got the overall shape of the telephone, okay? Then when I'm trying to determine on the cord, I can just draw the shape right off so that when I'm working with just shapes, I've got an overall sense of the structure. And so what I'm gonna do is take another piece of just regular paper and slot it under here so you can see 
what just our shaping would look like. Okay, so you see how that changes the structure of the foam? And now I've got my border, I can kind of tell where it's going. And so if I were to draw this on a canvas, I would want to acknowledge that so that I could um, put the shapes within the five by seven um, uh, piece on the canvas. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to um, erase this dry erase marker. And I'll give it a little spritz with some water here. Okay, and I'm gonna take the paper back out. And you're probably like, well, what about the details and the rotary and whatnot? You can always go back and add that, but if you don't have your pieces positioned in there, then you run a little bit more of a problem trying to um, get the image in there. Now, you can do the measurement for the tabletop here or whatever this is that the phone's sitting on, and I'm noticing that it's about one and a half distance, meaning that if I'm measuring this and this, this segment here, is whatever distance it is, right? And you can use a brush handle. In this case, I will take my, um, this is my number six silver brush that I'm using, this is the Bristlon flat. And I'm just taking the handle and I'm measuring this piece, this segment. I'm just saying, okay, this is what the size of that tabletop is. And then when I duplicate that same segment, that's two, and then look, there's almost another half. So that tells me very quickly that it's about two and a half up. So I'm gonna use that measurement in a minute too, but I wanna show you while I've still got the dry erase marker, um, how we're gonna utilize that. So that's the layout and the shape of it. I'll put it in an application on this panel in just a second. Now let's talk briefly about the color mixing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna temporarily set aside this ampersand panel and I'm gonna bring my palette back into play. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on um, just trying to mix and match some of these colors and keep it more impressionistically. Now the whole panel was red, so um, we have the little peaks and tones of the red coming through. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take just a little bit of um, the yellow ochre and I'm pulling it aside, and this is my number two color here. And the red would already be down underneath the um, panel as we showed in the picture. So what I can do is just kind of dust my yellow ochre right onto the graphics Duralar sheet. And I'm just putting the spots that are primarily yellow ochre. Now you're not gonna be doing this, you're gonna work directly on your panel, but what I'm trying to show you is a way that you can kind of match up a lot of the colors to figure out what you need and don't need. So I'm just going in and I'm eyeballing the, the parts that are dominant with the yellow ochre. And if I uh, accidentally cover something up, I can just take my brush. This is my number um, two Bristlon Bright Brush, and I'm just gonna wet it. You probably have your class brushes that you can use. And I'm just gonna wipe up whatever residue. So it becomes literally like a paint by number. Now, if I wanna take a little bit of the number three and mix it in here, the red is a super powerful color, so it dominates very quickly all the other colors. I'm gonna take a little bit more of the ochre. As soon as I realize that red is dominating, I'm gonna abandon ship. There's no point in mixing all that red in because it's so super strong, it's gonna take over the rest of the paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just putting a little bit of that red back in because it's not visible as the underpainting here. So I'm just matching that up and that's telling me that there's a little bit of red within that painting. I'm scanning around and I don't see anything else really that is that color. So I'm just gonna pop that down and then I'm gonna wash out my brush, okay? Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of the ultramarine, the number four, and I'm taking a little bit of the number five. Now, black is also a super powerful color, so it's really gonna dominate this proportion once I add it in there, so I don't have to put much. And then I'm gonna put the smallest tap of the titanium white to just kind of blend out my color. I can already tell from this that it's a little too blue, 
which is why I think we could have easily done without the blue in this painting. But I am uh, going to add a little bit more black to try and dull it down. And I'm even going to pick some red because it's shining through the bottom of the, um, from the underpainting. So I, I can see that now that it's a little bit more of the purple. And I'll end up with this purplish gray. And then what I'm going to do is try and color match. So I'm trying to put it down and maybe I'll tell myself, well, that's a little bit, you know, darker than I wanted or whatever. But at least now it's allowing me to match the colors. So again, it becomes like a giant paint by number. I can see that some sections are a little darker, so I'm going to add some black to just a corner of the pile, allowing it to be darker. And then I'm just going to put that dark value in there. And I'm going to take a little bit of my dark here and a little bit here. Everywhere where I see dark, I'm just tapping it in. And man, this is so easy. I don't have to put a lot of thought into it. I'm just kind of playing right now. But this is a really helpful tool as far as application goes in trying to match values to colors. You don't have to make it this bite size, but it may or may not help you depending on what you're doing. And you can use a smaller brush. I'm just going to go in with the corner of this brush. Whatever your comfort level is, just pick a tool for the job. Okay. And then I'm going back to that purplish mixture. And my black may dominate it a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit more red, a little bit more blue, and a little bit more white. And I'm going to come back and fill in these other sections that are a little bit lighter. This was a little bit lighter. This one. Okay. My screen for you went black, Micah. Yep. Video went off, Micah. Yeah, yes. dis disappeared. Yep. I would use your name. Okay, I'm aware somebody's calling and I didn't have it on Do Not Disturb, so I'm trying to reject their call. Okay, so I'm going to go back in and put a little bit more of the purple on. Make sure you put your uh, audio back on mute, please. All right, and I'm going to take a little bit more white. And that was a little bit too much, but since I've already got it light, I'm going to go ahead and do my background because it's closer to that color. So I'm just going to pop this in there. Okay, I see a little bit of light here. I'm going to put just a little bit more light color. And it's not just white. This is a little bit too pasty and light. So I'm going to add a small bit of the yellow ochre to it. And still not a good match. I'm going to take a little bit more ochre. And I'm going to keep going. This is where that color mixing class comes in handy because you just keep adjusting it till you get it to be the color that you want it to be. Add a little bit more ochre and a little bit more red. And then I'm going to pop in my highlights, even though this is red background showing in.
And I don't see maybe just a little bit more red light. And I'm pulling some more of my ochre. I'm going to lift up to see what, if anything, that I've forgotten. Okay. I'm noticing a little bit of shadow of the cord down here. A little bit of the shadow here. And then the darkness of the rotary. Oops, too much paint. So whenever I do that, I'm gonna rinse my brush. Get all the moisture off of it by putting it in a paper towel. And then I'm gonna pull that paint back off. Okay. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of my white and mix it with my red. Oops, party foul. And then I'm just gonna double check by putting that paper back underneath to see how my image looks. You see how much of it I've missed? <laughs> All right, and now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of black, and a little bit of red. I'm going to check one more time. It's like the little magic trick where you're like, now you see it, now you don't. <laughs> but hopefully this gives you the idea of how to keep the strokes more impressionistic and then how to keep adding the value and tones to your painting. You don't have to use a transparency or the graphics plastic, but it just kind of helps to reiterate the tones when you're adding them in. Okay, does that make sense for everybody? So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the plastic off. I've got like my little mini impressionistic palette here. And I'm gonna go back to my original. And I'm going to take my panel out now. You can do the same, you can get your panel ready. I'm gonna get a fresh paper towel. And I'm gonna get my palette scraper. Let me grab that real fast. And I'm just going to scrape this so that I can start.
start from the beginning again. Get a fresh paper towel. And I'm going to fold this over into fourths and just hold it down here on the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, smaller brush, whatever you're going to use. So that now you're going to be working with me. We're going to take our smaller brush and we're going to draw out our image on the red canvas. And I'm going to start by trying to use a little bit of ochre, but I may have to tone it down with a little bit of black so that it shows up on the canvas. So I'm taking my yellow or my ochre. If you don't have ochre, you can just add a small dash of red and blue to your yellow and you'll get a, a more dulled down ochre. In this case, um, I don't need it, but you see how powerful the red is, how it just kind of takes over that yellow. So, just use a tad, a little dab will do you. And what I'm gonna do is just stick to my ochre. And I'm gonna put a little touch of black in just to deepen it down. I don't want a lot, I just wanna make the ochre darker than it needs to be. Okay, and then what I wanna do is I wanna try and draw my overarching uh, shape, the big shape that we talked about in the original. And remember, we were kind of determining how much distance was between the bottom. And you can just guesstimate. Don't be scared to just put a bottom line and say, well, I think the bottom of the telephone is gonna be here, right? And remember, we're just hosting this shape here. So we're trying to draw that out. We wanna leave enough distance to get the receiver and the top of the image. And so I'm gonna put a top mark here and kind of indicate they're not in alignment. These are stories that my brain's telling me, oh, it's not matching up. Oh, it's not gonna make the shape, way, way, way. So I'm just like, hold on, hold on, I got it for you, you ready? Whatever. Yep, keep rolling. So I'm gonna put my little uh, mark here for my uh, east boundary, which is gonna be this. And then I'm gonna put another mark for my west boundary, just creating the beginning of that shape. It doesn't matter if it's correct, I'll have room to adjust it later, but I'm just gonna put a north, a south, an east, and a west boundary so that I can begin to draw that shape. So I'm gonna just draw this down, and to the best of my ability, I'm gonna recreate this little anvil type shape that would be the base of the phone. Now I have to take action in order to correct and adjust. So what I'm trying to do is get a shape down and then I'll be able to go back and augment it a little bit. So what I'm already noticing is look at the huge distance between here and here. So if I were to try and take a measurement, I'm like, man, I don't know if that's right or not. Then what I could do is try and use my brush again and measure just this distance from the side to see what I'm dealing with. So I'm gonna take the brush until it hits the side of the telephone Boom, and then I'm using that segment and I'm measuring that segment and I'm saying, okay, there's a measurement for my distance between the telephone and the side of the handle. So boom, there it is. And now I'm going to try and measure that somewhere else and see, well, where else could I find that space? It's not quite the distance between this shape here. Let me see if I can find it somewhere else. I'm just scouting around trying to find that measurement, and it's nothing really definitive. Let's see, looks like the best I can get is from the end of the canvas to the middle of the telephone. That's one way of looking at it. And then also from this receiver to this end of the telephone, that's gonna be the same distance. But I don't have that measured in here yet. I can also take this distance, because I've already established it here, and I can measure that. And I'm saying, okay, there's a measurement, and look, it's one, not quite two distances between there. So if this is the distance, then I'm going to remeasure. It doesn't matter what it is or if it's right. I'm just measuring again and saying, well, there's one, and then one, two. 
So I'm a little bit way off on this side of this, right? So that tells me that I need to expand the left side of this. So I'm gonna continue to pull it out to give myself another mark and then I'm gonna double check it again. And I'm measuring this distance from the telephone to the end of the canvas. And I'm saying there's one and there's one, two. It's still not quite far enough, right? So I'm saying, man, I'm gonna have to push it over again. So I'll just take my shape. I'll make this a little bit more full. And then I'll try it again. Here's one, here's one, two. Okay, that's better. So you see how many adjustments I had to make? And it doesn't matter that the lines are there. If you wanna get rid of them, your red should be dry enough that you should be able to erase if you need to. And I'm just gonna blot that up. And if you wanna erase them off, then you can just wiggle the lines and get those harsh lines out of the way so you don't get confused, but you don't have to. You can just leave them there as part of the underpainting. That's why we're just drawing with these dirty colors just to get started, see? So no big whoop. Does everybody have their large shape drawn? Is everybody kind of caught up with that? And even if the measurement's off just a little bit, you'll still have some time to um, adjust it again. Right now we're just laying down some maps. We'll take some more measurements and we'll get some more um, ideas of, of shape and proportion. But right now we're just drawing that basic shape. So I'm adding a little bit more here. I'm going to spritz my glass palette here so my paint doesn't dry out. And what I'm going to do is try and draw the next two large shapes that I did, which would be the receiver bells, right? So I know too that they have a little bit of a flat shape coming here. So I'm gonna try and put that so that I can look at the negative shape in between the distance here. So I'm just drawing one mark there and one mark here. And then I'm gonna try and draw the triangle at the top. And then just pull it down, triangle, pull it down. Almost like you're drawing like a little mini house like you did in kindergarten. Mini house. There's my triangle, no judgment. And I'm noticing this is smaller than this, no problem. Just making that observation and moving on. This is Princess Leia and these are her little buns. <laughs> All right, so whenever I have those basic shapes down, even if I'm noticing that they could be trimmed down, I can choose to come and go ahead and pull them down a little bit. So I might choose to make that a little bit softer and then eliminate that line. And now I've got a little bit more of a balance going on, or I can make the corrections later when I make my uh, definitive um, marks at the end. But for right now, I'm just gonna keep persevering. I'm gonna keep moving through so that I can make corrections later. And what I'm noticing is you don't always have to measure like distance with a brush. I'm also just gonna check parallel angles. Look at how long this stays parallel before it angles again to make a diagonal. So there's like this flat line, and then there's a diagonal line, and then there's another diagonal line. So I'm gonna try and mimic that up here. I wanna give some distance from the top of the image. So I'm gonna put a flat line here. And then I'm gonna try and arch this down to meet my shape. And then I'm gonna try and arch this down to connect and meet my shape. Everybody good so far? Okay, so now I'm going to try and um, indicate my tabletop. I see that it's just a little bit down on the phone. Um, 
I had measured it earlier to be one and a half. And so I'm gonna first try and just come down a little bit on the shape and just put the line. So I'm gonna come down a little bit on the shape and put the line. And then I can measure it to see there's that segment is that big. There's one, two, and it's a little bit, it could be a little bit higher to be a true one and a half, but it's close. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit higher. And then that line would come straight across and give my telephone something to rest on. And so depending on what size you're working on, um, this could take you know longer to get the steps in if you're working on a bigger size. Uh, this is just a little five by seven. So then I'm gonna try and put the shape of the cord in. So I see that it's coming off here and it's got, it's not quite touching the um, receiver. So I'm gonna come down and over, down and over. And then I'm seeing that it's coming off the top here Okay, just the beginning. I'm looking at my negative shape, negative shape meaning this background shape that's here and I'm trying to kind of match that up to help me give some determination of the phone itself. So now if, if we were treating this like an abstract or anything else, we've basically just broken it down. It's not a telephone, it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shapes. And so all we did was just draw some lines to create some barriers that give me an overall sense of it. And then I can kind of create some others. So I'm looking at these other little negative shapes that are between the phone. And so I can say, okay, I'm gonna create a little bit of a, of a negative shape here that gives me the beginning of the receiver. I wanna create the negative shape here for the part that the cradle, I'm guessing, is what we're gonna call it. And then I'm noticing on this side that there's a bigger negative shape. The phone doesn't even touch the side of it. So what that may tell me is that I can shift this over a little bit. You have to find your own truth in it. But what I'm noticing is that these lines are a little bit too far over. So I'm taking a wet brush and all I'm doing is work in the direction I wanna push the line. So I want this line to go over a little bit. So I'm pushing it that way. And then I'm just wiping it on the paper towel. So that way I'm creating a little bit bigger space here for the shape that I'm trying to create. And the cool thing about this is all of this is gonna be concealed with paint anyway. So it doesn't even matter we're not stressing over this at all. We're just drawing it down. I'm not stressing over this at all. I don't know what you're doing. But I'm gonna pull this down and give myself a little bit bigger shape here. And making a slow adjustment. So now I've got a little bit more room for that negative space, right? And I see my cord coming off the side. So I'll go ahead and put that in. And then what I'm noticing is that these edges here on this shape are kind of at a diagonal. They're a little bit more angled. And I'm noticing that I can pull those down to create more of that contour shape. And you see with every step that we're getting a little bit closer to the shape, we're kind of like, it's like throwing a piece of sculpture down and then just whittling little sections of it away. So I'll come back and look at the negative shape in between here and I see how slim the phone is. Look at the distance between the receiver and the end and you see how bulky my phone's got. So I'm just gonna slim it down, giving myself more distance in between the two. 
and then I'm going to double check my other side. It's interesting. You see how this kind of has a red shadow and this has a blue shadow. So it's definitely part of the phone. But what it is, is this is the side of the phone where the light's hitting it. And then this is the cool side, which is blue. So even though it's there and it's very visible, I can taper it down just a little bit and leave that to be a blue section later on. Okay. So with that adjustment made, I'm going to start breaking these larger sections into smaller sections. And I'm going to start with my big kahuna here in the middle, and I'm going to try and create a circle. Now I know that the circle supersedes the top here. And so I'm just going to create my circle. And I'm noticing the borders of it, like how far does that go? You see, I'd have to stretch it a little further. But again, the hardest part of this is I'm trying not to have any judgment. I'm just trying to get the shape down so that I can come back and measure and tweak. And you'll see by the time we're done with this, that there's plenty of wiggle room to correct the painting. I'm going to do the smaller circle on the inside. So that I have the beginning of that shape. And I'm going to widen it as needed. Again, this is just the bare bones. And then I'm noticing the space left. And I'm trying to determine, okay, well, how, how could I divide that? And what I'm seeing is a very clear boundary here that gives me a little bit of space in between there and then a bigger space in between here that's divided. So I'm going to pull this down. And then I'm going to give myself a little bit of a boundary down here on the bottom. And that's going to give me a little bit more margin of error. Now this line's pretty wide, so when I narrow it down, it'll give me a little bit more space. So I'm not really concerned about it right now. Also, we're painting the spirit of the telephone. We're not trying to duplicate Mr. Raymond's work. Um, we're trying to come close, but it's the spirit of the telephone. <laughs> and then I'm going to take, um, let's see, I'll go ahead and work on these little receivers for now. And I'm going to create basically where the bottom of my triangle ended, the roof of my house. And I'm just putting a line across to connect the roof of my house. And then again, on this side, I'm going to connect the roof of my house. Okay. And then I'm going to connect the receiving end. So I'm going to start with this negative space where the cradle is. And then I'm acknowledging that if I was to draw a straight line across here, there's a little bit of the cradle that goes above it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create that increase with the cradle. Okay, and then I'm noticing that the line above it goes above the cradle. And then it kind of disappears here. I don't see a connection, and the connection is visible here. It just goes straight down. So I got the beginning of my telephone now. And with those bare bones, I think we've got enough things in place that we can start actually blocking in with color. 
Does anybody have questions on the bare bones of the drawing before we begin to lay down? No. If unless there's something major, major, um, everything else can be amended as we block in. Michael. Uh huh. Um, my question was um, back when you were talking about the um, like the I'm I'm pointing my screen like you can see it. Um, the the base part, the basic part of the like anvil shape you kept calling it. Uh -huh. Right here. Right now, um, are we using? Um, are we trying to rock? to focus on just the part that's the darker color and not the highlighted sides, highlighted or dark light sides? Right now we're just drawing it. So we're just okay. drawing, drawing the pieces. So we're going to paint in the colors in just a minute and then uh -huh. you'll be able to see the actual sides of it. Right now you're just going for an overall shape. Okay. Um, like when we drew it with the dry erase marker and we just focused on a shape here and a shape here and a shape here. So okay. that's all we're really trying to create. I think what you're asking, like maybe this is light and I drew it dark. Is that what you're kind of referring to? Um, it's more like toward where the um, cord hooks to the phone and you see on your picture on your um, that you're going by, you see the little reddish area. Mm -hmm. And on the opposite side, you see the little bluish area. Like oh, is, this and this? Yes. Is that okay. included in our basic? I, I have it here. I have it here. You see, there's the fainted line. So I'll block that in red in a minute. Okay. And then I have it here. It's just the faint line. I originally okay. included it, but then when I was redefining the shape, remember I slimmed it down and then I was yeah. saying, Oh, look at how this is red and this is blue. So right. it's still there, but we're okay. going to pull it out in a minute when we paint it. That's a great question. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have a question? And these are just bare bones, right? So we can put anything back in. That's the advantage to wet on wet is that we can apply more and then have those layerings come back on top. And that's gonna be part of the advantage. Now I'm gonna wipe my, you don't have to do this. I'm just gonna do this to avoid confusion. I'm gonna wipe my um, base color off. The yellow may or may not have shown up on here. So I don't wanna make it straight black. I just wanted it dark enough to show up. But this is all gonna be an afterthought. And I didn't wanna to put too much paint down because I still want my bright red to show up through. So what I'm gonna do at this point, we wanna work from the back to the front, meaning that I wanna handle the background and then the tabletop accordingly so that I can get um, some more image up. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the blue and I'm gonna take a little bit of the black and it doesn't matter if other colors get in it or not. And what I'm gonna do is then take just a little bit of the white. I really wanna be sparing with my white. Now, if the mixture looks a little bit too blue, you can add a little bit of ochre to kind of dull it down a little bit. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit more white, but I really wanna be careful with the white. I got too much, so that's why I abandoned ship. I wiped all that excess white off, because watch what happens. This is already gonna to be too much. You see how bright it made it? It was too much too quick. So now I've gotta go back and add the other colors in to help pull it back into shape. And so instead of having a little pile of wrong, I got a great big old pile of wrong. <laughs> And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my large brush and I'm not creating final strokes, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and feather around my drawing and you can leave little peaks of the red showing through. Now, if it's too close to your um, drawing, like if the color's too close, I'm going to make this just a little bit lighter so that it shows up differently than my drawing so I don't lose my drawing. There we go. So that way I've still got my cord visible. And remember, we're just going for value. It doesn't matter about the color at this point. So even if it's you know wrong, I wanted it light. The only reason I changed the value is so that I didn't lose my drawing. But we're just slapping a base coat in. And this is part of the blocking in. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to understand if our drawings needs additional measurements or not. And you're probably already thinking it is, you know, maybe your mind's in that zone where it's just like, man, this just isn't good enough. But if you can keep moving, even with that voice talking in your head, then you're going to be surprised 
at the outcome when you're done and how much of it was really irrelevant. So I'm continuing. I'm noticing that it goes underneath the receiver a little bit here. So I've essentially just blocked in the shape around. Oops. So now I've got that dark gray. It doesn't have to be the exact color. It's just a block in just to kind of share and show the beginning of the foundation. Okay, now I'm going to clean my brush off. And I'm taking a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of this gray color. I'm just going to mix this gray color right back into my yellow ochre. And I'm going to do the lower platform where the telephone is sitting. So I'm skipping a little space for my cord. And my paint's drying out, so I'm going to have to mix more. I can't be lazy with my mixing. i got to mix everything back in in order to keep it nice and consistent. And I'm going to give myself a little spray on my palette because I think my lights here are drying it a little bit more. And remember, it's dark to light, so this is a little bit greener, and that's no problem because I'm going to brighten it up. And I'm getting rid of those corners that I originally had because they're no longer visible there. I'm not painting the shadow shape yet, shadow shape being this shape here. I'm just putting a foundation so I can get a better look at my telephone. Okay, and because the color is so similar, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put it in the central part here. Hmm. Michael. Yeah. What did you do to your um, yellow color to get it? Did you add anything to it at, on your bottom table part? I just mixed the color that was in the background already to it. I just pulled a little bit of that. Oh, OK. It. Thanks. Mm -hmm, you're welcome. I'm just putting a second coat here so that it gets a little bit more opaque. Okay, then I can come back and brighten a little bit. So now I'm just using the bright ochre and I'm putting a second layer there. Just where I see bright, I see it a little bit brighter here. And I know that it's got a little bit more white, but I'm working my way up slowly to it so that I can just kind of tap the strokes in to indicate a little bit of light. And 
and then I'm creating that shadow shape by adding the light. So that I've got just a little bit more brightness going on. How's everybody doing so far? You catching up okay? Keeping a good pace? It'll be available for you to uh, rewatch too if you need to follow up with it. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix some more of that purple tone that we worked on together in the beginning when we were working on the graphics. Mike? Uh-huh. Bottom of my table is a little more green than I want it to be. Mm -hmm. so, so either you have two choices. You can either, because right now mine's more green as well. I'm going to go back and brighten it up. But what I'm hoping to let it do is I want the color to set a little bit. Now, um, are you using ochre or are you using a bright yellow? Ochre. Okay, so we can let it sit just a moment and then we can put this brighter color on top, which will let it get more. We'll mix the ochre with the um, titanium white, but I'm hoping to let it sit just a little bit so that we can build on that layer so it won't keep mixing with the dirtier colors. But do you see in the picture how it's kind of green here? I want yes, to really I allow, I want to allow some of that to be visible, including the red shining through. <laughs> So depending on how solid and how green yours is, you may have added too much of the background color, which is the blue. So you mm -hmm. have two choices. If, you, if you're not getting any red visible through, you can either wet your brush and then you can dump it off on your paper towel and you can pull some of it back off, right? So that you'll be okay. back down to your red. If I'll do you that. Want if you want to remove some. And then what you can do is go back with a little bit more dominant, still having a little blue in there, but not enough to make it green. And then you can just kind of stroke back over it. Because okay. this is all going to be an afterthought anyway. It's just going to be uh, an undercoating later. And then you'll be able to even go back and put dark. But we just want the dark to be pretty substantial right now so that it'll be uh, visible. Does okay. That help? It's, yes, it does. Thanks, Micah. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work, you know, just come back on and let me know. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to mix up some of the purple color. I'm going to take some of this ultramarine blue, and I'm going to take some of the red, and this is the pyrrole red, but whatever red you have. Now, the red, pyrrole red is very intense, and it's also a lot more opaque than some of the other colors. So I'm going to need to use less of it. So I'm actually just kind of um, abandoning some of that red so that I can get it more on the purple scope. And I'm getting a larger proportion of red and I'm taking the smallest tip of white. And when I mean small, I mean like, look at how little paint there is on the brush. And even then that's probably still too much. Yeah, see, it just makes it like out of control. And it's too blue for me. So I'm gonna dull it down by adding a little bit of black. And remember, I said the black is super powerful too. So I just want a little corner of it and I'm gonna build it up slow so that I can add more colors in. Okay, and then I'm gonna try and pull some of the paint. And my mind is telling me, eh, that color's not quite right. It's a little bit dark. And I'm like, okay, yeah, keep talking. We're just blocking in the phone. Mike, could you just, while you're doing that, go over the colors again? Because you did that a little sure. fast. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ultramarine, red, and a touch of white. And it's all going to be conditional. I had to tone mine down with a little bit of black, but maybe you nailed the proportion right off the bat. But I just used number four, number three, a dash of five, and a dash of one. The, the highest proportion color, if you were mixing this down like the mixing green class that we did, the highest proportion is the number four. And that means that when we overall look at the color, 
it's more dominant with number four than it is anything else. The second highest proportion is the number three, the red. And then the five and the one can be so overpowering that I just used small little doses of it. And so once I place the colors here, and right now I'm just doing the little receivers, which is the, the dumbbells on the phone, then I'm gonna try and say, okay, I know I didn't match that color exactly and it's not important right now, but what I'm gonna ask myself is where else in this painting do I see that color? Okay, I see it here, I see it here, but on the bottom part, I see the color here and here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go and pull that color in a little bit and place a mark of it there. Even if it's not exactly correct, I'm just putting the value down. And then I'm scanning the phone and I'm saying, where else do I see it? It's a little bit darker, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some of it up here on the um, handle of the receiver. And then I see a little bit of it down here underneath the dial. And so I'm gonna fill that in. So that overall, I've got some blocked out spaces of purple. Just the beginning. Remember, it's shape, value, and then color. So my top priority is, how is the shape? What does the shape look like? Once I get the shape down, then I can go back and adjust the value. And then finally, I can glaze to adjust the color last. So it's not as big a deal. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come into the black, which is the number five, and I'm just going to go ahead and try and pop in my darkest values within the phone. So I'm pulling just some of the bone black, and I'm noticing, starting with the cord, I'm noticing that it just goes a good uh, two-thirds of the way down with just a couple of spots. So I'm going to turn the brush sideways, and I'm noticing how much paint's on the brush. I might just wipe some of this off and just collect it so that it's on the end of the brush. And I'm turning the brush sideways so that I can even practice on my palette just dapping the corner of the brush. So I'm dapping the corner of the brush. So I'm picking up the paint and I'm dapping the corner of the brush. What am I doing? I'm dapping the corner of the brush. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm going to come up at the top because I see it also continuing and it's on the lower half. So if the light's coming in and hitting the top of the cord, it's on the lower half of the cord. So I'm turning this sideways. And I'm just dapping. Dap, dap, dap. No judgment, just getting some dark value in. And then I'm going to move on to my receiver and I'm identifying first, where do I see it? I see a good portion of it here, almost the whole lower part of the house. Okay. And then I also see a line of it coming through where the uh, bottom of the roof, what we're going to call the roof connects. So basically I can fill in this whole shape with peaks of black. And then I'm going to draw across the top. 
Okay, again, it's just a foundation. We're just one step closer to laying it in. We're not judging the color of it. We're, we're not even heavily focusing on the value just yet. We're just kind of placing to see if the shapes are still correct and we're beginning to explore the value. Okay, I'm gonna take another little spritz here of my palette just to keep it nice and moist for myself. Okay, now I'm gonna continue and move over the receiver. So the only black that I'm really noticing is here at the bottom and I have a shape indicated where I can kind of pitch the bottom of the receiver. And then in order for me to get this straight line, you can go to a different brush, but I'm choosing to hold the brush straight down so that I can create some mark making um, by doing that. So I'm gonna hold the brush as straight down as I can, to still keep it in view for you. And I'm just dragging it across and it's creating that black outline. Now, if you would like to switch to your smaller brush and that's more comfortable for you, then do that. Um, but I just tend to stick with one brush. And I'm also gonna come down on the other side because I see the black there. So I'm gonna redeposit some paint and come down there. That line's a little thicker than I wanted it to be, but that's okay. Then I'm noticing some of the black on the underside of the receiver. So I'm gonna put that there. And then I'm noticing it on the corner of the receiver here. So I'm gonna make a little triangle space for that. And then I notice on the end here, there's some black. So I'm just piling it in there. No judgment, no stress. I'm just beginning to lay the foundations in so that I can um, see where I'm going. Okay. So now well, all I've done, just to recap, is I've laid a color in the background, whether it matches or not is irrelevant. I've laid a color on the um, mid-ground, which is irrelevant, whether it matches or not. And then I've begun to scan here for the dark value, here for the dark value, and I'm working my way across here for the dark value. That's all that I'm doing process-wise. Now I'm going to explore um, moving down through this final shape. Because remember, if I was to touch this telephone, this would be the piece that I would touch first if I was to reach out and physically touch it. So I'm working back to forward. I started with the very furthest back, then I came to the next, then I moved up, and then I'll move up here. We're working to where we're physically gonna touch it at the very end. So I'm gonna start by working my way down the phone, and I notice here there's some dark value in the cradle. So I'm gonna acknowledge that by putting a little bit of dark value and moving down and around my rotary. And I'm just gonna overlap some of the boundary there, it's okay. And I'm gonna create that side boundary that we talked about by just using a little bit of paint and turning the brush sideways. Okay. Then I'm gonna to come to the other side and I see that it comes on the cradle and then it kind of goes across the top to really outline the, um, the rotary on the top. So I'm using the side of the brush, I'm wiping off so that I can keep this nice and clean. So I'm wiping off and that makes the brush super crisp and clean. And then I can just go across the top and it creates like a little bit of a dark barrier for me. And then I can pick up some more paint and stay on the inside and move in so that now that's got a dark value as well. Okay, now my first pass at this giant circle, I made it a little bit bigger than it needs to be. Of course, at this point, I can go in and taper some of it off by putting my, my best indicator for dragging that circle in. And again, if you need to use your smaller brush, do that. Pick a tool that's comfortable for you. I tend to just go with one brush, but if you need something smaller and you're feeling out of control with the bigger brush, then use something smaller and feel more comfortable.
okay? So <clears throat> I'm acknowledging that there are some little specks, but I'm gonna choose to get those after I lay in the dial tones, right? Or the little numbers. Right now, what I'm doing is I was just trying to get the outer perimeter there and there. I just saw it predominantly on this top side and on this bottom side. Now I'm noticing it again, there's a dark rim here, okay? And <clears throat> I'm gonna actually pause on, um, drawing the perimeter here, and I'm gonna do the same method where I just drag that dark line to give myself a bottom boundary. And then I notice on the top portion here, there's a little bit underneath, so I'm gonna put a top boundary here as well. And it's probably hard visible, but there's a lot of dark underneath this key. And if I don't put it down now, when I put the white, I'll have a harder time going just in that little area. Okay. Now I'm noticing the connection. I did this line already, but I noticed that there's a strong line here because this is the little, I don't know what to even call that, but that clicker that stops the numbers from going. So I'm gonna put a little line here to indicate that. And then I'm gonna put the beginning of that piece, which is just gonna be a little black line. Again, if you're wanting to use your smaller brush, you can go in and outline much smaller with these pieces. You don't have to stick with a big brush. And then finally, I'm noticing the front of the phone, which is the, some of the darkest parts. And I'm just gonna lay that down. My shape feels like it's a little bit off, so I'm gonna try and make it a little bit wider, but I don't wanna bridge my gap too much. I'm still just blocking in. This whole front facade seems darker to me. And then I see just a little bit of a mark making on the outer perimeter of the phone here. So I'm gonna put a little mark of black down there. And so overall, I've got a good idea of my darkest values, which are the blacks in place. And let me grab something real quick while you guys get caught up. Okay. So now I'm gonna take any of my spaces. Let's see, I wanna try and put, I'm gonna just go ahead and switch to this smaller brush so that I can uh, lay in a little bit more effectively for you. And that way you don't have to struggle with the big brush. And I wanna go back and acknowledge uh, my little detail in the cording. So I laid the black down and by now it's a little bit more dry. And so I'm gonna take this purple, and if it's dry, I'll just mix up a little bit more. And I'm gonna go in and create some purple markings over my black cord. Just letting it be 
real playful. And I'm just going to conceal more of the red, but not all of it. I just want little peaks of it to show through. Mixing up just a little bit more. And then I'm going to scour this real quick. I'm going to put another tone here for myself just to reiterate the shape that's already there. And I'm noticing that this piece is dark, so I'm going to cover some of that. And anything up at the top that I didn't put a coat on, I'm just going to slap a coat down so that only little pieces of the red are left. I'm looking at my rotary here. I see that above here, this is like a purple, and that's too dark. I'm adding just a little bit of white to the purple. And I'm looking right here. It's lighter than the little stopper that's here. So when I put my color down, it was too close to the one that was there. So I'm going just a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to conceal a little bit more of this red here because it's the same light color. So I'm just putting a little bit of that light down. And then I'm going to pull a touch of the ochre in because I need to conceal this spot. And it's not just purple. It's, it's like a, a neutralized gray. So I'm going to do that by pulling in the ochre and the white. And I'm first going to lay the color down. And it's close, but it's a little too dark. So I'm going to add just a little bit of white. And now that's too white. <laughs> so I'll just pull a little bit more of the purple back in. And that kind of softened it down a little bit. I'm scanning the top of the phone and asking myself, I see that light color. Does anything else need to get lighter? Well, this could get a little bit lighter and this could get a little bit lighter. It's still not the right color to me. This color is a little more red. So I'll just pull the smallest bit of red in. And I'm having a trouble adjusting it, but I'm going to keep going until I get it right. A little bit more white, a little bit more red. Okay. And then I'm going to put a light tone underneath these dial keys on this side because it seems to be a little bit lighter. And you'll be amazed once you close out a lot of your red, you know, how together the piece looks for you. I'm leaving these because these appear to be a little bit darker black to me. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and close out this piece. That's a little bit too light. So I'm cleaning off my brush. And I'm going to go in with a little bit more black. And tone that down just a little bit. Tone that red down. And then I'm going to put the black back up here in the dial. I'm scanning the painting 
and looking for any other pieces of red. And at this point, I've got enough mixture on the palette that I'm just, you know, popping some values in to determine how much of that red do I want showing until you get a value study that has like little glimmers of red showing through. Micah? Yes? Um, can you let me, just give me a minute to catch up? My phone was going nuts with some weather report or something. Mm -hmm. And I was distracted. No problem. Well, we only got a few minutes left, so we'll, okay. we'll need to be mindful that maybe some people can't stay on longer and want to finish. Okay. So remember, it's on recording, so you can always come back to it if life happens. True. Micah. Uh-huh. I never did get my black mixed real well, so I'm sort of struggling it, and um. So the best I got, it looks chocolate, like poop. Like, okay. so what color do I need to add to it? I don't, I don't have the answer for that right now, but as long as it's dark, um, okay. you may not get a black phone. You may just have a brown phone. Um, yeah. but, if you, but you've only got the colors that you've got. So if you want it darker, just pick your darkest color, which I think in that set is the Prussian, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So then you'll just add a higher increase of that color and then it may be more blue than what you want, but without the black, you know, and especially yeah. painting a la prima, you can only get it to be so dark. You know, okay. if you could continue glaze layers, then you'd be able to get a nice true black. Uh, okay. But for the purpose of this, you know, remember it's about the study. What is our takeaway today? Everybody gets to ask ourselves, what's our takeaway today? Did we feel like we needed more time to sit with it? Well, that's what the recording's for. Do we feel like we uh, drew with paint for the first time? Then we get to success ourselves with that. Do we feel like we escaped for two hours? Then, you know, maybe there's a success there. Um, did we make do with what we had, you know, because we didn't have every single supply? You know, these are a lot of the lessons that I'm learning about being more and more creative and just saying, you know what, I mean, I'm just gonna, you know, keep it simple and painterly and just, you know, there's so much stress and anxiety going on, you know, how, how do I want this telephone painting to add to that or not add to that? So hopefully that helps everybody. I know that's a very vague answer, but you know, there's always room for one-on-one -on -one help in the PACE group because you can post things and ask questions there. And then there's always, oops, room for more help um outside of this so we're just moving through at a pace that we can keep up with hopefully good questions though there's a lot of problem solving from this end on me for um, i'm just constantly having to roll with the flow otherwise i'm not i'm not getting any of it off the ground <clears throat> Okay, so what I'm gonna do at this point, I've got enough of a layout, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but just to address some of the final lifts, and I'm gonna do them a little bit more quickly. You may not be doing every single step with me, but I think it'll be obvious enough that you'll be able to keep working with it, and you'll have the photo on your device. And then I'll um, reach out to each one of you just to check in, and I'll be able to look at your um, physical screens and see where you're going with the paintings or we can check in with them again next week um, as part of the, the check-in when you're catching up. But all I'm doing now, the principle of what we're doing is that we've laid down enough of a value that you can compare back to the painting and say, is it more red, is it more blue, et cetera, um, and adjust as needed. We could keep working and working and working this, and we could make the class five hours long and get it to look just like this picture. But you're, you're gonna walk away with enough data that you're gonna be able to determine you know, where you need to work on it. So if the colors were really challenging for you, why don't you consider eliminating the colors and just work with like a black and a white and just try to get the painterly strokes and the values, right? So whatever stress level is occurring for you, you wanna minimize it back down to um, 
augment the instructions accordingly. And so that way you can kind of keep up and practice again. You can do, you could do the whole study again on a piece of uh, palette paper and just do a value study beforehand. But now that I've got essential values laid in, what I'm going to do is take the same recipe of colors and I'm going to begin to lighten a little bit. Now I know from experience that this gray is achieved by mixing all three of the primaries. So what I'm gonna do to keep this uh, easier for me is again, I'm gonna wipe off these colors that are already here so that I have a little bit more room. I got my handy dandy scraper. And then I'm gonna take the primaries. I'm trying to make a purple because when I look at it, the first thing I see is purple. So I'm taking some blue. I'm taking a little dash of red, and the red's super powerful, so it didn't take much to dominate that whole color. I can bring it in slowly, and this is, this is the exact same thing we just mixed up the first time, so that's why I'm moving faster with the colors, because it's just whatever colors you mix. Now I have a nice purple. Now I wanna make a beautiful gray, which means I need to add the complement. The complement of purple is yellow, and I've got the yellow ochre here, or whatever yellow you're using. And I'm gonna pull that until I get it to be more on the gray side. And then I'm gonna add the smallest tap of white, smallest tap of white, and I'm adding it in. And then I'm gonna start in the most illuminated areas. There's almost like a diagonal of light. Do you see it? It comes here, here, and here. Those are the darkest parts. So I'm gonna try and put some illumination in the picture. Now, when I put this down instantly, it looks darker and thicker. <laughs> so that tells me I've got to add a little bit more of my light, which is the yellow and the white. And I'm going to try again. And I'm going to put corner of it here. That's a little bit better. It's kind of close to what it was a minute ago. So I can take a little more of the same two colors and keep adjusting it. It's better for me to go more cautiously than to add the whole thing. And I'm just lightly dusting. I'm going to pull a little more white and a little more yellow still. I'm still not quite happy with the brightness. I'm a value junkie, so I'm going to make it a little bit brighter than it is in the picture because I like it being really bright. And I'm just going to make that diagonal because I want it to really stand out. And then I'm softening my lines by dragging the brush. So I'm depositing it down and then I'm softening it. Okay. And then I'm going to put a little bit more light color there and I'm like, holy moly, that's super light. Okay, so now I'll just do the opposite. I'll pull my dark back in. As soon as I realize it's a mistake, don't keep manipulating it in there. You'll just end up with a bigger mistake. <laughs> so I'm mixing some color up. You can see my red got out of control. And then I'm gonna pull that lighter color back in. And I'm gonna try and readjust it that way. And that's better for me. And then I'll go back to lightening it. Too much white. I have to keep wiping it off because I'm getting too much and I don't want the same problem to happen again. So I'm noticing that yes, it's lighter, but in the picture it's more of an ochre color, but that's okay. I'm going to keep rolling for now. I see a little bit of brightness here in between the receiver, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And I'm seeing a little bit more lightness down here. And then once I get that light value, I'll come back and glaze it with a little bit of ochre. So 
So overall now I've got a little bit of a light source. It's real subtle, but at least you can see a little bit more of a light source than we had before. So it's not the end all be all, it's just one pass closer. And then I'm gonna let that sit and I'm gonna move down here and I'm gonna brighten up and Teresa, this is where we were talking about um, adding a little bit more brightness. So I'm gonna bring just the ochre over this time or whatever yellow you're using. And I'm gonna take a little bit of white. And that's a little bit too bright. I'm gonna try and make a little darker color off to the side here. And I'm gonna start in the brightest section that I see and lighten and feather. So again, that I'm trying to kind of fade it as I move on. I see a little bit here and a little bit around the shadow shape. Okay, and then I'm gonna wet my brush. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of straight ochre and I'm gonna marry the two so that I don't have this bright, super bright. I'm gonna kind of fade it into some ochre, letting some of the red shine through on the table. So you can notice how I've embellished the light source a little bit, but I like it, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And while I've got this color out, I'm also gonna go ahead and highlight the inside of the rotary. And then you can just use finger or brush to soften that out. Take a little bit more ochre. Made that too bright, dull it back down with just some straight up ochre. Okay, and then I'm going to take my small brush and I'm going to take that same color just the beginning with a, it's the light ochre, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my little dials in. And I'm gonna use the corner of this. So I want a color that is very light, and you don't have to put it on your finger. I'm just showing you how to keep this really, you know, clean. There's not a ton of paint on it. And then I'm using the corner so that when I'm going down, I'm just tapping it with the corner and I'll get more controlled markings from that. And I'll just indicate where I want the, little dolls to be and it's not about being perfect it's just about landing them in there letting go of that control and just putting it down And now I'm going to continue with this brush and I'm just going to accent going back and scanning the painting for any um, marks that I want to deepen or brighten. So maybe I want to create a little bit more of an outline. So I'm going to continuously make sure that the brush has like not a lot of paint on it. It's going to be fluid, but it's always going to be thin and crisp. You see how there's no globs of paint on it and that's going to be really important. And I'm going to turn the brush at an um, angle sideways so that I can get a straight line. And I'm just going to really crisp up some of the outlines of 
this paint. And I see it on the receiver in here, so I'm going to reestablish that. I see it down, down, and over. And I'm basically just creating an outline on the on the receiver again, just to darken my darks. But if I press down too hard, I may make the line a little thicker than it needs to be. I see the corner of the phone accentuated. I'm gonna go in between the grooves now and just paint some of the recessions that I see. Some of them are purple, some of them are black. So what are you noticing with value? What's speaking to you? What colors should be shifted a little bit? Once I go through with my dark value, I'm gonna create a little bit of light value. And I'm still just mixing up a light version of the ochre. And I'm gonna start by highlighting parts of the cord. I don't see any highlights on the bottom. I can make these a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna pop in a little bit more white. But I'm kind of making it a dirty white so it's got some ochre in it. I see a line there and I see a line there. So I'm gonna put one there. And then I'm going to put one across here. And then I see a little bit of a light highlight there. So I'm just going to brush that in. I see on the cradle, there's another highlight. And down the side. Okay, and then I'm just going to tweak as needed. I see a little bit that's more on the orange side, so I'm going to mix up a little bit of the ochre, a little bit of the red, and a little bit of the white, and then I can also create perimeters there without having it be so bright. So any of the drawing that you weren't happy with in the beginning, you can kind of tone it up a little bit by adding a little more. And I'm just gonna take a little bit more black. and get my dial set. And then I'm going to put my cord in by turning the brush sideways. Okay. 
And the last thing is I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight on this uh, stopper. So I'm creating a little bit of a light beige color. And I see it right there. I'm going to put mark there and then a mark on the edge of this. A little bit too dark, so I'm going to thin it down just a little bit. Okay, and then you can just go back through and tweak as needed, but at least you've got a good idea of how to create it with one stroke and then just uh, alter it as needed with value and color, just using a few of the basic colors here. Okay. Any questions on that?